morning. It is. I'm nervous. It's all right. I knew I was going to come up here because I have the same exact rug in my dining room. So. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. The rest of you might as well go home. So I wanted to talk about lining up. So if I'm emanating this song, this vibratory song with all these different, this mix of notes in my vibration, and I want to line up, right? And there's this larger part of me that already has everything. So is it when I resonate with those pieces, those vibrations that are in my vortex that I pull it into manifestation? Well, you've made it a little more complicated than it really needs to be. Give us a little more about the resonating notes. So when I'm feeling, I'm being that which I want. Is that what pulls it into manifestation? Well, yes, but rather than saying pulls it in, because it's already being offered, it's you allowing it in. So you could say, I'm pulling it in, but in the pulling, there's a little resistance. It's you softening yourself of any resistance. It's like taking away from yourself any pieces that don't match it. And absent of any pieces that don't match it, it just flows naturally. There's no pulling. It just flows naturally by law of attraction. There's no effort. There's no pulling. There's no manipulating. It just matches. It would sort of be like saying, if we take your analogy exactly as you offered it, it would be a little bit like saying the radio station is broadcasting a signal and I'm going to turn on my radio and set it to the same channel so that I can pull the signal in. Well, you could say it that way, but really you're just setting your dial so that you can receive the signal. And you can tell when you're receiving, just move the dial around and see. It's on it, and I'm getting it, and it's off of it, and I'm not. It's on it, and I'm getting it. And there's really no pulling involved. It's just tuning. Tuning is a better word than pulling. Okay, so as I try to tune myself. As I, as I try to tune, there's too much effort okay. in that. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier than that. Okay. So as I tune and I flip the dial, trying to... Not, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> to tune, there's really big things that I want to tune to. Well, feel the effort factor in the... There are really big things. In other words, did you hear her introduce effort and risk and doubt just by calling it big things? So here's the process. So you've been living life and sorting through what you don't want and what you do want and launching these vibrational rockets effortlessly, really. You haven't been launching the rockets. They've just been emanating from you. And as they do, Source, who stands in your vortex, acknowledges what you're asking for, tunes to it, focuses on it, Law of Attraction responds to that stronger tuning. So your desires become more and more and more. There's an evolutionary process that takes place at a vibrational level. And we're describing this that you can't see and hear and smell and taste and touch as a vibrational reality that is and has been in the state of becoming for quite a long time. And now your focus now is to get into the receiving mode so that you can receive what's already evolved into your experience so that you can allow it into your experience and so it's about focusing in ways that don't disallow it really that really is all that's required to allow what you want to begin its manifesting into full view process just stop doing that thing you're doing that doesn't allow it and how do you know when you're doing that thing that doesn't allow it, you're worried about it or you're fussing over it or you're calling it big. That great, big, hard to create thing, you know, Abraham, that thing that I've wanted that hasn't come for quite a long time, that really, really, really big, big, big thing that I want. We say develop some patience because under these conditions, it's not coming anytime soon. <laughs> but what happens is as you're 
enjoying life and enjoying the thought of it and receiving impulses about the thought of it. So you're joyful in its not yet manifestation, but you're joyful in its steady evolution. Then it will move from an idea that you receive. You'll get lots of ideas and impulses and you will move closer and closer and closer to it. And when it manifests, it will just feel like the next logical step. It won't feel like some big thing with some big fanfare. It will just happen in your experience. That annoyed Esther when she first realized that because she wanted it to feel, and it does, there is an enthusiasm as something bursts into the visual scene. In other words, we understand that. But really, it can't feel like too much of a stretch or it can't happen. You have to feel capable of it and expectant of it because this happened and then 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 this happened and so isn't it just logical that then that would happen in fact nothing else is logical it's as easy to create a castle as a button it's just the object of attention and the way your energy mix is about if you want a button and you don't doubt a button you're going to get a button And if you want a castle and you don't doubt a castle, you're going to get a castle. There might be some things that you'll have to come to accept along the way, like your worthiness and like your ability and like the universe's ability to yield to you and like the process of the law of attraction. You might have to come to know some of that before doubt will be gone. But there will be a time that you will really understand that you are the creator of your own experience and that you can be or do or have anything that you desire. Okay, so like with work and things like that, I manage risk. That's what I do. So it's kind of hard. Say again? I manage risk. I manage risk for the government. Yeah. So it's... (laughs) (laughs) But I actually find very inspired ways of solving things. The big that I'm talking about is it's more big, like personal for my child. I don't know how to help bring about healing. There are a few things that we're just going to start at some very soft and basic places. And as you listen to us and realize how much of this you already know, then you realize how close to this you are. All day long, life is happening because you are living the manifestations of vibrations that have already been flowing. So manifestations are happening that you call reality because they're factual you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch them you're witnessing these things but what most people don't realize is that in the mere living of life and witnessing of things that you are coming to constant new decisions and conclusions about improvements that you would like to experience and whether you're putting words to them or not, you are emanating this desire. And so is your child. So is everyone. Everyone who is experiencing anything is launching these rockets of desires. The hardest thing for humans is to have launched a desire about something that they prefer while they're still looking at the reality of what is. And that's what makes attention to things that feel risky So counterproductive, because when you're looking at the risks, then you cannot be in the receptive mode of the solutions, because the problem and the solution are very different frequencies. And so it's natural that there would be some awareness of risk or some awareness of what is, because life is coming at you, and you can't just ignore what's happening. You're going to be a witness to many things, some wanted and some not wanted. But in the process of sifting and sorting through all of that, there is a launching of desire of improvement, asking for something beyond what is. And that's what most humans seem to not remember or line up with, even as we speak it as loudly and as clearly and as often as we do. Because the now reality simply gets more of your attention than even the improved desired reality. And so... That feeling of risk or that feeling of discord about looking at something that is, is that it's holding you apart from the very improvement that you've asked for. You see, in order for something to come about, 
You have to figure out what it is you want to come about and launch it. Source takes care of the rest of it and lines it all up and gives it to you. In other words, when you ask, it is given. Then your work, beyond those two steps that just happen, is that you have to decide. Let's put it that way. Let's speak it in stronger terms. You have to decide rich reality gives you more satisfaction when you focus upon it. If you can make your decisions about where you focus in time based upon how it feels when you focus, rather than getting too far down the road and trying to figure out how it's going to come, when it's going to come, where it's going to come from, who's going to bring it, how it's going to come about, then you can hold yourself in a vibrational stance where you will be the receiver of the idea, the receiver of the next step that will help you to witness the unfolding of what you are wanting. Now, of course... You don't create the reality for anyone else. But when you desire something in a very strong way, and you line up with your inner being about it, your desires count for a lot. Because after all, there is nothing that is more prominent in your vortex than the welfare of those people that you love and care about. And so there's plenty already in your vortex about this subject. You've just got to find a way of lining up with it. So... We get why it feels big to you. Everyone understands that. But you've got to whittle the distance down. Let's change the subject just slightly. You'll hear it better this way. Let's say you are in enormous debt and struggle around money. And you have a desire for enormous wealth and freedom in money. So in terms of reality that is already manifested, there's a big gap between where you currently are in terms of what you're allowing to manifest in your experience and what you desire. Well, you've got to find a way of narrowing that gap down to something that is manageable. And the way you narrow it down to something that is manageable is by accepting that it is what it is and that you have two choices. You can focus on what is in a way that makes you feel dissatisfied and law of attraction will perpetuate more of that. Or you can focus upon what is in a way that makes you feel more satisfied and law of attraction will perpetuate more of that. Those are the only two choices. We've been talking to you for years about an emotional scale because your emotions are your indicator of how much resistance you're putting into the mix in relationship to things that you want. The better you feel, the less resistance and the more things are evolving and the more you are witnessing them. The worse you feel, then the more resistance you're putting into the mix and the more you're slowing things down. So as you are understanding that you have more control over the way you feel than you think you do, because most people say, no, I feel this way because of that. And we say, no, you feel this way because you're looking at that. And then you would say, well, Abraham, how can I not look at that? And we say, we know it seems hard or impossible not to look at things that make you feel dissatisfied. But if you will hear us and understand that there are many things in your experience to which you do not right now feel dissatisfaction, and if you will find those things, even those lesser important things, even those much lesser important things, and you will focus upon anything and everything to which you can feel satisfaction, your point of attraction will shift. And when your point of attraction shifts, your relationship to your vortex shifts. And when your relationship to your vortex shifts, now you're in the receiving mode where something will occur to you that will be beneficial in the bringing the desire that you hold into the reality that you want to witness. Mm -hmm.